Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'll show you guys a few different ways that you can zoom in and out on your video clips in DaVinci Resolve 16. So we're going to first start with zooming on the cut page of DaVinci Resolve. So that is the second one from the bottom. So you have media and then cut. And then we'll also talk about doing zoom in on the edit page as well, the traditional way of editing videos. So if you are editing on the cut page, and then you want to modify things about a clip in question, go ahead and left click on the clip you're going to be modifying. And then look in this preview window up at the top. You're going to want to go to the bottom left section of that, where if you hover over the second icon, it'll say tools. And if you click on that, it'll bring open a bunch of new options that you can use to modify your clips. So specific for this video, the transform tab over here, the one on the far left is where you're going to find zoom options. So if you want to zoom in on your clip, you simply take either the zoom width or the zoom height by default locked together. Basically with the zoom link, they will scale at the same ratio, which I would think nine out of 10 times is probably what you're going to want anyway. So if you left click and hold on one of these and you drag your mouse to the right, it's going to zoom in. And if you drag it to the left, it's going to decrease the value zooming out. Note that when you have your clip zoomed in, you're welcome to adjust the position of your zoom in as well by left clicking on the clip and holding and then dragging it around on your screen. So you can position it basically exactly where you want it to be. Now, if you happen to want the width and height to scale at different values, then simply left click on the zoom link so that the values are no longer linked together. And then you can select the setting that you want to scale. So if you want the height to increase, you can left click, hold and drag to the right to increase the height scaling. And you can do the same stuff with the width. So you can decrease the width by left click holding and then dragging to the left or drag to the right in order to scale the width up again. Now, if you recheck the zoom link, then any further scaling will be done at the ratio that it's currently set. So if I take the height now and I shrink that, it decreases both values, but they're no longer tied to each other because they had differing values before. So if you want to return it to where the zoom in is equal for width and height, then one way you could do it is to basically type in the same value on one setting to the right setting. So if I double click here on the zoom height, I can type in that value of 1.040 and manually type that in. So I guess you actually need to remove the zoom link before you do that. So remove the zoom link and then double click on the zoom height and type in the value of the one on the left. And now you can recheck zoom link and they will scale together perfectly once again. So let's go over to the edit page now. If we left click on our video clip and have the inspector open in the top right, then you can see that uh, the zoom values have already been set from the cut page. We can reset this to a value of 1.0 by double clicking on X or the Y value. Note that the zoom link here is now basically a chain link linked together. So let's type in 1.0 to reset the zoom into the default value of 1.0 or normal zoom. So just like before in the inspector, we can control the values here. So if you left click, hold and drag to the right, it's gonna increase the value and dragging to the left decreases the value. You can also type the values in manually such as 1.5, if you have zoom link enabled, then whatever you do to X is going to be mirrored over to the Y. And if you want them to scale at different values, then uncheck the zoom link and then change the values individually. Now, one thing you can do on the edit page, which is super powerful, is to actually keyframe your zoom. So if you want the zoom in to be an animation, then you're probably going to want to work on it over on the edit page where you can keyframe your values. So let's reset the zoom here to 1.0 uh, and 1.0 for Y as well and recheck the zoom link. And what we'll do is we'll go to, let's say right around here and the timeline. So just drag the timeline cursor to where you want a zoom in or zoom out to start to occur. And then over in the inspector next to the zoom property, check the little icon, the gray diamond, um, and that will turn it red, creating a keyframe. So a keyframe sets what a value should be for a property at a specific point in the timeline. And if you set a second keyframe with a different value, then DaVinci Resolve will animate that property between the two values over the duration uh, between the two keyframes. So if I go, let's say like one second in here uh, by moving the timeline cursor around, you'll see that uh, the keyframe diamond here is gray again, meaning that there's no keyframe on this point. 
but you'll notice that there's still that back arrow to go to the first keyframe we created. So we can create a new keyframe either by left clicking on the keyframe diamond, or once you already have one keyframe created, you can automatically create second and further keyframes by just changing the value here. So if I increase the zoom here to something like 1.1, you'll notice that the keyframe diamond turns red because it automatically created a keyframe. I can hit back to go to the first keyframe, right to go to the second one. And this is a useful way of navigating between the keyframes of any properties that you're gonna animate. So if I make sure with these arrows that I'm at the first keyframe by clicking on the left arrow until there is no more left arrows, then we can basically hit play and view this little animation we've created. So if I hit space on the keyboard to play the timeline or I just hit the play button, then we'll get that little animation going on where we actually zoom in over time. Now, another way rather than animating properties would be to actually cut a clip into two different clips and then on the second clip to zoom in or zoom out to the thing you wanna focus on. So if I hit B for the blade tool and I slice this clip into two, and uh, maybe I just go over here and make another slice. So this middle section, let's just say that's where we want it really zoomed in. So what I can do here is uh, go to the first frame of this clip. Uh, since we basically cut it from the original clip, it's still keyframed, so that's a little messy. If we were cutting separate clips that had no keyframes, then we could just change the value at any point. But I'll just change the zoom here to 1.8, something like that, and then go forward, make sure that the value is not changing. Uh, make sure also that it's not affecting any uh, further cuts that you've made. So if you click on this clip, you can see that's still the 1.1. And then this middle clip is the 1.8. We might also want to adjust the position here. So this is more focused on, let's say, the kettle pot here. So uh, because we didn't keyframe it, we can just change the value at any point, And it's going to apply all the way across this cut of the clip. So let's decrease the Y position in order to have it pan upwards on the screen. So negative actually makes you go up and positive makes you go down. And now if we go back here before that cuts made in the timeline, hit play, then you can see it basically jump cuts to a zoom in of the object in question. And then when it gets here to this next cut, it zooms back out by resetting back to that 1.1 zoom value. One more way that you can use the zoom property would actually be to have the video zoom out completely until you have kind of a zoom out to black effect. So to do that, you can take one of the last few frames of your clip, the ending of your video presumably, keyframe it there, go to the final frame, and then decrease the value of the zoom either by typing it in or by the left click hold and then drag to the left method, and then decrease that value to zero. So if we play this, then you can see it basically zooms out until it is so tiny that it's almost invisible. But it's still technically there. So if you want to do that, you might also want to combine that with opacity. So if you use the arrows to navigate to where the zoom out starts, we can keyframe the opacity there. So leave it at 100% to start. Hit the right arrow on the zoom uh, keyframe and get to where it has a zoom out of 0%. And you can just decrease the opacity to zero there, making it completely invisible. So let's go ahead and play it one more time with that opacity added in. And you can see that this makes it a lot smoother of a transition. You could do essentially the same thing in reverse for the start of your video if you so chose. So one more trick I wanna show you guys about zooming in your videos is the use of ease curves. This is particularly relevant to doing zooms because if you have a zoom that occurs at a linear speed, you might find in certain situations that it just doesn't look as smooth as having a zoom that has an ease curve to either slow it down at the start and speed it up at the end or vice versa to have it start really fast and then end slow. So it gives you a little bit more of a natural movement. If you think of a car accelerating, then you know that the speed or the velocity that it's traveling at, if it starts at zero and goes up to 60, isn't consistent, but it gets a little faster as it goes throughout time. Similar to that, like you have a car that's braking and then slowing down, or you have a car that's accelerating and speeding up. So same thing with ease curves. So let's take this clip here and add one more quick zoom. So I'm going to just keyframe it at this point and we'll have it go up to a zoom of let's say 2.0 between those two points. So it takes a couple seconds for this zoom to occur, but that's good because that will allow us to really see the effect of the ease curves. It had a very linear flat speed. It didn't accelerate at all. It was just a one consistent speed. So if you want to take the clip and add an ease curve to that, then you need to select the clip and then go to the bottom right hand corner 
And you'll see something uh, over here that kind of looks like a hump that goes upwards and then a downwards hump, kind of like a uh, X and Y graph you may have seen in school. So it's right next to basically what looks like a keyframe diamond. So if you click on this, it opens up the curve editor for the properties that you have assigned in your clip. So from earlier, I already went ahead and added in opacity properties. So that's what you see selected right here, highlighted by the red. The opacity, you can see at the end of this clip, uh, the opacity drops from 100 to zero. But we can change the zoom property by clicking on the drop down. But then if we hover over this gray line down below, we can see that that is the zoom Y property, which is tied with zoom X. So we really only need to click on one of them at the same time. I'm sure actually if you turned off uh, zoom Y, then zoom X would just show right below it. But since they're linked together, you can't really tell the difference. So you just need to select the property line that you want to adjust. So you see here that for this zoom in that we're going through, it has a flat line going up, so consistent speed. But we have these handle points where we can actually adjust and assign a curve. So up here at the top, you'll see a few different curve options. The first one on the left is going to ease in slowly and then speed up as it goes further on. Whenever the lines on this graph are becoming very vertical, then that's when you know that the speed is very fast against the time property because time is X. So the faster it goes up, the faster the property is changing. And then uh, the third one over here is a ease out curve. So basically, it's going to start really fast at the left point and then get really fast at the right point. And then if you want to return things to the linear value, then you can assign the option over here on the right, which is just a flat no curve to any handles that you've selected. And then the second option over here is going to have it be really slow in the middle, but fast towards the edges. So if you want to adjust the curve in front of one of these handle points, then you need to select the handle with a left click and it'll glow red. You'll see over here that the linear no curve option is currently selected and we can change that just by left clicking. So if we click on this, then it's going to be slow at the start and fast at the end. Note that when you change it to a curve option that you also get an additional handle for adjusting the curve. So you can basically customize it from the default value. While you're doing that, you can kind of see a ghost of the original curve before you actually started modifying it. So you can just get this to where you need it to be. But note that if you pull this handle too far away from its original position, you might end up giving yourself a weird result by actually in this case having it zoom out before it zooms back in. Uh, as you can see, the value drops below the starting place and then rises back up to the second handle's ending place. So that means it's going to be a zoom out and then a zoom in. Of course, also going along with that, the further you pull this handle downwards or upwards, the more extreme the effect is going to be. And if you were to drag these keyframe points closer together, then that would make the animation occur over a shorter period of time. So for most basic uses, you're probably not actually going to need to mess around with this blue handle. You can just stick to the default ease curve in. So if you want to return this handle point to normal, then uh, click on the linear option. And then if you want to make that ease curve out, uh, then select the right hand point. You can see that this leads into the right hand point there. So this will affect whatever's to the left in terms of the curve. So if you click there, you get a curve on the left, which you can kind of adjust there by pulling this out a little bit. Okay, and that'll look kind of like this. So you can see hopefully that when we actually add these curves in and we adjust it a little bit, that the zoom in or zoom out is in general a lot smoother than it otherwise would have been with a linear curve. Uh, so let's go ahead and show the ease curve in. So selecting the left handle point and then adding that curve back in. And uh, we can show it like we should have a minute ago. So you can see it starts really slow and ends really fast. But in terms of how smooth it looks, it makes a lot more sense because it accelerates a bit over time rather than immediately going from like zero to 60 miles an hour in a car you go to like five miles, 10 miles, so on and so forth, and then you get up to 60 miles per hour. So it all depends on how you want your zoom ins to look, but that's where you find the options for it. So you can play around with that a little bit and figure things out, but that's at least the general idea of where you find that. And for the record, this will also work with all animated properties inside of Resolve. So anything you're gonna keyframe, you can put into the curve editor, it's really useful. So in a nutshell, that is essentially everything you need to know about how to zoom in and out of video inside of DaVinci Resolve on both the edit page and the cut page as well. So I've been Chris, I hope you guys learned something from this video and I will see you guys in my future video content.